Kia ora, this is set 7571, Fight for the Dagger, which is a Prince of Persia Lego set that released in 2010 to tie into the release of the latest hit movie. I bought every single Prince of Persia set back when they all released, all of them except for this one. This set I actually bought only last year for around 40 bucks or so, for the sole purpose of finishing the collection. This was one of those sets where because I managed to get everything else, there wasn't anything tying me to get this set, but completionism finally got the better of me a good decade later, and a good thing too, these Prince of Persia sets are actually pretty hard to come by in the NZ aftermarket. The set released in 2010 for only 30 USD, so I'm guessing that's around 60 NZD for 2010 money. Now it's valued at around $125 brand new or 100 second hand. So yeah, I actually got a pretty good deal on this one. The Prince of Persia line on the second hand market actually seems to be pretty okay for all of its prices so long as you ignore that really expensive castle. The set overview here is a smaller build of a street market scene with some cool castle elements that really looks like it could work for an Aladdin based set. The set includes a few extras for making up that market scene. You get things here like a table and a wheelbarrow. There's also a camel, probably one of the better parts of this set. There is a small stable stand for the camel here as well. The camel is carrying these crates that contain food items inside and one of them even features some gems. These extras are neat and they do help to sell a bigger scene than what's actually on offer. As for the castle build itself, I like it a lot, but keep in mind this is coming from someone who's had the privilege of owning the great big Alamut castle, so in comparison, it's really small and it is a significantly lesser build, still it's got some good stuff to go over. A staircase build to lead up to the main ledge here, the ledge has some nice colours in the medium nougat and tan colours, there's also a really cool red textiles piece here included which is the most attractive element of this set for me, none of the other sets included materials like this, one of my favourite elements in the Prince of Persia line was the use of these bricks for walls which featured studs on the sides of them, it meant you could display Dastan looking as though he's running on them, it captures the wall running mechanic of the game so well despite being based on the movie, it's a really great addition honestly, the interactive feature of the set comes in this balcony which has a collapsing gimmick and a trapdoor on the inside. You can just pull on the rod and the trapdoor will open. The balcony has the exact same feature but the rod is located at the back of the tower here. And this is Prince Daston, who is one of my most treasured nostalgic minifigures. That Jake Hall likeness can be questionable, but if you view this as a video game character like I do instead, he looks great. He was included in all five sets, four of those were the exact same variant. He was important in LEGO's history for giving us two brand new pieces. His scabbard that goes around his neck on his back to hold his swords, and his hairpiece. That hairpiece has been used in so many other sets over the years, I'm surprised to learn that it actually started from him. I adore his torso detailing and his legs as well. The whole figure ensemble is stellar for someone like me who absolutely loves video games adapted into LEGO. This is Princess Tamina who also appeared in the Quest Against Time set. She is the exact same figure in both of those. That Gemma Arterton likeness like Jake Hall, is quite questionable but it still makes for a nice minifigure. Her hair in that colour was brand new for this and her face actually was originally just made for her and it would remain that way for quite a while until Lego began using it for Princess Leia. The white colouring looks really nice but because this figure is so white in her torso detailing and so old, that white does start to fade and it doesn't look as pretty as it once did. Double sided face print, cheapest way to get her in this set as well. And now here we have our two quote exclusive minifigures, but they are figures made up of reused parts and they even use the same parts in some aspects as well. This is Ahsoka, who is a minor but still named secondary character from the movie. He is servant to Princess Tamina, so it's cool to have him here. He wears all gold armour and he brings us the dagger, which was a very cool special piece made just for this theme originally. It would be used later on in themes like The Hobbit and others. Underneath his gold armour is the exact same torso that's used for the merchant, which is a pretty lazy inclusion if you are ask me, that same torso was actually used for the ostrich jockey figure from the same theme. His face was exclusive, but it would be used later on in a Pirates of the Caribbean set that released the next year. This is the Alamut merchant figure, he uses some misc parts to make up his civilian look. The line didn't give us very many civilian minifigures, but I do always enjoy getting these types of minifigures to help expand your collections. His torso as I mentioned is the same one as Ahsoka's and the ostrich rider from the ostrich set, but his face print was exclusive to the Prince of Persia line also releasing in the Alamut Castle set though, where it was used on one of the guards. Instructions were the medium sized manual and they contained some cool sand theming throughout. We have an image of the set all built up and a nice render of a display of the set as well. Images of the two play features here that we went over followed by the inventory list and the Lego Club mention. Here we can see the full wave of sets, 5 sets released in total and the theme went down as one of the most overlooked licensed themes in Lego history, one of my personal favourites. 
I really love this theme as a whole, this set specifically, it's just okay. It's a decent expansion of the Alamut castle, but since it's just a standing wall with no genuine exclusive minifigures, it's a little hard to feel as in love with this one as I do those others. One of those sets that by no means is bad, it just so happens that I got everything beforehand, so this is kind of unnecessary. If you enjoyed this look at an older LEGO Disney set, liking and subscribing does help to support this channel. Kakitsayano.